Hi guys, this is Shana McTie with Shana McTie Photography. I am so excited to be back to release the Fleetwood Collection for Lightroom. I would call this the sister pack to the Bohemian Rhapsody Actions. We had a lot of feedback from people requesting presets that were similar to the Bohemian Rhapsody actions that came out earlier this year, and I'm really excited to show you these presets. They are kind of like a build your own preset pack, which is really unique and versatile. So I'm going to show you how to use them on this photo, this cutie pie right here. So when you load the Fleetwood collection, you have multiple presets on the left side. It also will come with multiple brushes that can be used with it. So each section here in the Fleetwood collection, it's kind of like it stacks on top of each other. So in the exposure section right here, depending on your image, you can brighten it, you can darken it, or you can leave it just as is. And so like if I decide to come over here and then I jump down here and click something and I'm like, oh no, I don't want it so bright. You can always come back and click on a different one and it will change that for you in this section. Same with under the adaptive brushwork section. This is like the AI portion where you can select the subject, which subject, and it'll determine where your subject is and which one matches your subject really well, which one matches your background and which one matches your sky. After that, you have the clean tone enhancement and the artistic color grading section. So under the clean tone enhancement, you can choose any of these for the photo and then you can come down under artistic and you can stack one of these on top, which is really fun and it can really help boost the colors of the photo. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning and show you how I would edit this one. This one was taking place in Northern Colorado. This was shot with a Canon R6 50 millimeter 1.2. And so I'm gonna do just a plus one to start. And then I'm gonna come under here and we have multiple subjects that you can choose from. You can choose subject light, clean, warm, green, or magenta or you can do subject bright and same color tones to it. So whichever one matches your background or matches your subject, she is pretty clean to begin with. I might wanna warm her up. So I'm thinking I'm gonna do a subject light warm. So I'll click on that and that pops it right onto her. Then I'm gonna come down under the background and we have background boost and background depth. And background boost is gonna make your background much brighter, whereas depth is gonna bring down exposure a little bit as well as add color. So for me, my personal taste, I think I'm going to do depth warmth and click on that. And again, remember, you can always come back to anywhere in this section. And like if you are halfway through clicking and then you're like, you know what, I actually want background boost instead, you can come back and click on it and it'll change it for you. Or let's say background warmth. Let's say I want the background depth warmth. It is at 100. You can always come up here and you could lower your, lower the amount of it, or you can even increase the amount of it. So I'll just keep it right as is there at 100 and we'll keep going. I don't really have a, much of a sky with this photo. We didn't have any clouds in the sky, but if I did, I could hover over these and find which sky that I wanted that would match the photo. And then I'm going to show you clean tone enhancements. These are color grading. Looks like kind of messes around. I love all of them. <laughs> and I'm just going to hover over each one. This is climbed a mountain. I like the warm in that one. Turned around. Saw my reflection. Snow cover. I love the kind of orangey reddish tones to this one. Till the landslide. And this has brought me down. So you have from 30, what is it, 34 to 41, you can choose one of these. So let's say I choose took it down and then I say, you know what, actually, I want to come over here and choose snow cover hills. You can do that. You can just click on it and it'll change it for you. So anything in this section, you can only choose one. You can't stack on top of each other in this section. So I think for this photo, uh, I think I'm going to do took it down. So I'm going to click on took it down. Then I'm going to come under the artistic color grading. These from 43 to 53, these you can stack on top of the previous section. So you can hover over any of these and see which ones you like. Some of them add, give you a little more light to it. Some of it a little more matte, a little more warmth. I love them all. <laughs> but I think my favorite 
I'm between for this photo. I think I love afraid of changing. I like that it gives it a little more warmth to the photo. So I'm going to click on afraid of changing. And then, of course, if you want to do black and white, we have black and white down here as well. And we have adjustment section. This is where if you want to add a vignette, you can. You can do lens correction on off or you can just reset your entire photo if you want to right here. So now that I have clicked going down, I can come back. So let's get, hover over it. OK, so now that I've done all that, I can still come back up here to exposure and I can say, you know what? Maybe I do want it brighter. I want a plus two. So I'll click on that. You can always come back and adjust any of these. Uh, same with the subject. Let's say I come back and I want to hover over clean. This is warm. Or let's look over bright, maybe subject bright and subject bright warm. So you can always hover over any of them and see if you like one of these better. I am between subject light warm and subject bright warm. I think I like the little pop it gives her on subject bright warm. So I'm going to click on that and I think I'll bring it down just a little bit. But I really like that. All right, so before we move on to brushes, let me just show you where we're at. So just those few clicks right there, you have a before and after. And so the brushes are where I feel like it really helps bring your image to life. And I'm really excited to show you these. So over here at this round dotted circle is where you, you're going to have like your masking and your brushes. So you'll notice you already have two here, and that's because we had the adaptive brushwork section, and this was an AI portion. So you have your subject and you have your background right here. So we're going to create a few more masks. So to do so, you're going to click Create New Mask. And I think I want to accentuate the sunlight. So I'm going to get a radial gradient, and I'm going to make a big circle right there where that sun is coming over the mountain. And then under here, you have several choices. My favorite one that I think will look the best is the soft sunlight. So I'll click on that. And I love the light that has come over the mountain. If it ever ends up on your subject and you're like, well, I like it there, but I don't really want it on my subject. All you have to do is you have an add and you have a subtract button underneath your mask. You can click subtract. And then any of these, you can subtract any of these. So we're going to subtract our subject and it's going to take it off her face. So there it goes. Or you could leave it there if you wanted it there too. It's totally up to you. So now I might just move this around a little bit, make sure the radial gradient is exactly where I want it. You can even get it closer to her. Now that I've done that, you'll notice like it won't go over her at all. I think I'll have it like right there. Perfect. And let's see. So the next thing I'm going to do, and this will be subtle, but I'm going to click select people. And there's only one person, obviously, in this photo. But the reason why I want to select the people is it lets you have options of different parts of her body. So for this, I'm going to actually, and I know it's very tiny, but it, I'll notice it. I'm going to select her iris and pupil and her sclera and create a mask. So right now I'm just working on her eyes and I'm going to come to custom and I'm going to go down to greater than Gatsby catch light and click on that. And so I'm going to zoom in because I know it's subtle, but if they print it, it's noticeable. Okay. Oops, a little too close. So if I turn the mask off, now her eyes are really, really dark. If I turn it on, they pop out quite a bit. So that is why I do it. Um, it really it really is uh, pops on closer portraits, but I use it often on all my photos. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask and I'm going to select the entire background because I want a little more vibrancy to my photo. So now that the whole background has been selected, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click the one that says color pop. And this is going to add some vibrancy to the colors. And so this is before and this is after. And let's say I love that, but I wanted a little more vibrancy on her outfit. All you have to do while you're under that mask, click add and I would get a brush. And I'm just going to zoom in. And you can choose your 
your flow right here and your density. This is how strong or how weak you want that mask to be. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush it on a little bit because you can always decrease the amount if it's too much. I'm going to brush it onto her outfit. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see. And then I think I'll also put a little bit on her little scarf. And then I'll back up and I'll show you it. And then that is turn it all off. And this is all on. So you can see it's a nice pop of color. There you go. And again, if it's ever too much, you can come right here to where it says the amount and you can always drop it down a little bit. Or let's say I put it on her and I, I changed my mind. You could always click subtract and you get a brush. And then you could always like brush it off of her a little bit. So there's a lot of options or ways to work that out. But I like it. I personally like the vibrancy on the photo. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to create a new mask. And I'm going to select people again. And I will select her. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some sharpening effects. So I don't want to do it to her skin. That's I want to keep the skin soft. So I'm just going to click on teeth hair, clothes, and probably eyes, and then create a mask. And then once I've created that mask, again, under here, I'm going to click on details, sharpen details. And then that's going to help sharpen those particular details so you don't lose the quality. And that way their eyes pop and their lips pop and, you know, the most important features are sharp. So then I will... Turn that. There we go. So now what I'm going to do is create another mask. And again, you don't have to do all these masks. This is personal preference. I have a lot of fun playing with the mask and also just helping to bring that photo to life. So I'm also going to create a new one. We'll do another radial gradient. And I am going to just go across the mountaintop like that. And this time I'm going to use the haze and the fog and this is just going to be kind of like a hazy look to the the mountaintop which is pretty realistic when the sun is setting out here but again i don't want it on her so i'm going to click subtract subject we'll take it off for her perfect and then let's see another one i'm going to do is let's say i want a little more warmth in the photo i could get a brush and I could come down here. Let's see. And I could click warm up. And what this is going to do is I can get a big brush. And I'm just going to rub the warmth towards her. Just kind of creating just some more warm light going towards her from the sky. And again, just realize why it's going slow. It's because I left my flow and density lower. So I am going to pull that up. That way it comes on a little stronger. There we go. So now if I turn it on and off, this would be before. There you go, before. And then if I turn it on, this will be after. And again, it's just this warm light that's coming towards the little girl. And then the last thing I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna do just a little bit of dodging and burning since that is something that I tend to do in all my photos. This is gonna be a little more traditional dodging and burning in Lightroom than what I do in Photoshop. So in Lightroom, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new mask. I'm gonna get a brush. And then I'm gonna come over here and I am going to click, I'm gonna dodge the highlights. I'm gonna get a really small brush. We're gonna zoom into her little outfit. Basically, anywhere where I see highlights or where I want my viewer's eyes to go, I'm going to paint it on. So I'm going to get the creases of her dress. And again, if it ever gets too bright, we can always decrease the opacity of it. But right now, I'm just going to go over the creases. Make it a little brighter.
and go over her chest a little bit. And I'll go down her arm right here. Up the side of her dress right here because I can see the light hitting it. And pull it up. And then I'm going to drop my flow and density pretty low and I just want to tap over her face just to brighten it. Perfect. And then I will jump back out. And then the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to get another brush. And I'm going to go to the one that says burn shadows. And this one, I'm going to put it into the shadow area anywhere that's pretty dark. So into the shadows of her dress, this would look really good. Let's see. And then we'll pull our flow and density back up. And I'm going to trace the shadows here. And there. Right here. Perfect. Now that I have brushed the shadows where I want them, we'll pop back out. And I'll show you it. If I turn off, it's thinking. If I turn off the burn and the dodging and burning, I'll also show you the dress in just a second. So that's with it off, and then if I turn it back on, you should be able to see it pop back up there and you can kind of see what it did to the dress. It just makes it stand out a little bit more. So I love all of that. And then the very last thing I might do is create a new mask, select people, person. And then for this one, I think I'm gonna select the body and the face and create a mask. And then I'm going to go the one that says skin glow, and this is just going to smooth the skin, also brighten it. Sometimes it can be a little too bright or it can um, just be a little too soft. So if that is the case, like that just now, I just drop it down the amount because she doesn't need much at all. I just want to soften it just a little bit. So I'll drop it down to 30. And to me, that looks perfect. So if I turn off all the masking, and this is before and after, oops, let's zoom out. There you go. So before and after with the presets and then the masking. And then just to show you, if I was doing this and trying to move on to the next photo, instead of recreating every single thing I just did, all I would do is click copy, click your masking, copy everything. The only ones I don't copy are transform, crop, and healing. That's just personal preference. Click copy. And then let's go to another photo. Let's say in this session, I also wanted to edit this one. So you can find another photo or multiple photos in the same similar lighting from the same session and just click paste. And every single thing we just did will get dropped onto this photo and it'll make your life a lot easier. So you're just doing really editing one and then you can drop it onto multiple photos. So there you go. Thank you so much. I hope that this helped you learn a lot. And if you want any further information, please go to www.greaterthangodspeed.com.